Okay, welcome back to our channel today. In today's video, I want to tell you about a bear that you might be able to find at Grand Teton, a famous bear, probably the most famous bear in the world, a grizzly bear. And if you're going to Grand Teton soon, you might want to try to find this bear because she won't be alive too much longer. So who is this bear that I'm talking about? Well, her official name is Bear Number 399, but she also goes by the names the Matriarch and the one I like best, the Queen of the Tetons. So I haven't seen her personally and I don't have my own video, but I want to share as, as many photos as I can uh, as I talk about her just a little bit. Um, and just hopefully this will help you um, just put it on your radar for when you go to Teton next time. Uh, so first of all, why is she famous? Well, she's famous because she's friendly. She <laughs> She's not like a pet. She's not domesticated, but she likes to hang out around the road and around people. And so it's not uncommon to see really long lines of cars along the road or people are just kind of waiting for her to come across the road. They seem to get fairly close to her. Uh, there's always rangers there that are kind of directing traffic and making sure that she's safe. But unlike a lot of other grizzly bears, she seems to be quite comfortable around people, almost like she's aware that people are looking at her and that she's kind of on display, doesn't seem to mind it. And so she's really kind of developed this cult following. There's all these photographers. There's like over 40 photographers that just follow her around all the time. Now, how did she get her name? Well, the name 399 comes because when grizzly bears get a little too comfortable around people, the park service or the forest service or whoever's kind of in charge of that area will sedate them and then they'll tag them with a the number. And so she has a tag in her ear with the number 399. That just means she was the 399th bear that was tagged in that area. <clears throat> Just put it in perspective, I think there's over right around 800 bears now that have been tagged. So this this bear, the Queen of the Tetons, she was uh, marked and tagged back in 2005. And again, they just kind of thought she was getting a little um, chummy. And so they marked her and uh, she... <clears throat> They, they tested her teeth um, to determine her age at that point, and they determined that she was nine years old. And so that was way back in 2005. So now we're in, I'm shooting this video in 2020, and she's 24 years old now, which is pretty old for a grizzly bear. Grizzly bears can live up to around 30 years old, but they usually die before they get to that point from either humans or attacks or something like that. So they... They tend to um, not live this long, so this is pretty old for a grizzly bear, age 24. So that's why I'm telling you about her, because she might not be around much longer. Um, now, why does she hang around the road? Why does she seem comfortable around people? Well, she is a mama bear, and she is often seen with her cubs. And cubs... Um, tend to get attacked by the males and killed by, by the males, um, the big male grizzly bears. So she has kind of figured out that if she takes her cubs around the road, she'll be protected. That They'll be kept safe because the big male grizzlies don't really like going around people, so they don't hang out around the roads and the cars much at all. So she tends to hang around those areas to keep her, to keep her cubs safe. In 2020, uh, in the spring of this year, 2020, people gathered around the kind of her home area, her den, where her den is. All grizzly bears have like a home territory. And uh, people gathered around there hoping that they would see her again. They didn't know if maybe she passed away over the winter or not. And she came out of her den, and to everybody's surprise, she came out with four cubs. This was a record for her. She's had litters of three. Uh, she's had three litters of three cubs before, and 
and then she had a litter of one and a litter of two, and then she had four this year. So um, I'm not sure on the total numbers on her on how many cubs she's had, but uh, I think it comes to 16. And so um, everybody was shocked that a bear this old had four cubs. So it just kind of elevated her status as a legend in this area. People just excited to see her cubs. Um, she's had some of her cubs have died. One of them was named Snowy, was just a, a cute little cub named Snowy because kind of had a white face, a, a lighter colored face. So people started calling it Snowy. And uh, I believe it was her only cub that year. Um, I don't remember what year it was, maybe 2014. Anyway, Snowy was hit and killed by a car in a hit and run accident. The person left the scene. They never found him. The park service officials uh, had to wait until Bear 399 was away from the cub, and then they removed the cub. Uh, and then she came back and was searching for her cub and was panicked. And it was really, uh, by all accounts, a very sad, sad scene. Um, she has had only one cub who has also had cubs. So bear number 610 is her child, and 610 has had some cubs as well. And so uh, there's a video on YouTube where somebody has documented um, 399 running into 610, and 399 had her new cubs with her, and 610 had her cubs with her, and um, this was kind of the first time or maybe one of the documented times that 610 had seen her sisters. Um, so there's just kind of this whole uh, story line that goes goes on with uh, this Queen of the Tetons, kind of a cool, cool thing. Um, just real quick on the process of giving birth for a bear is interesting. Uh, the, the bears um, find a partner in the spring or summer, and then their body fat determines if they're going to have cubs and how many cubs they're going to have. So as they go into hibernation, you know, they need obviously their body fat to survive the winter, but then if they have enough, they can uh, support some other cubs as well. So um, typically when they have their cubs, they kind of mother them for two years. The cubs hang right around the mother for about two years before they go out on their own. And so, uh, and it kind of takes that long probably for the mom to build up the body fat for the next next litter anyway. So um, they, they tend to have their litters two to three years apart. Um, when they have their litters, that's typically between one cub and four cubs. And that's what's kind of cool about the Queen of the Tetons is that she's had all these cubs. And so there's just all these videos, images. People have made photo books of her and her cubs, they're just kind of uh, famous. So typically the cubs are born in January or February and then the mom sustains them and then they come out in the spring around May. Uh, I mentioned that bears have a territory. So uh, bear number 399's territory is right around Pilgrim Creek, kind of at the north end of the park. And she'll come down into the Oxbow Bend area from my understanding, she roams around a little bit. But uh, if you're looking to spot her, head up to that area of the park around Oxbow Bend up to Pilgrim Creek um, and just start asking around. Uh, again, people follow her and you might be able to just get word of mouth where she might be. Um, she's kind of become the face of grizzly bears as there's an ongoing hunting debate in this area. So... Back in the 1970s, there was only about 150 grizzly bears left in the greater Yellowstone area, and there were none in the Tetons, from my understanding. Um, and so that's when the Endangered Species Act was passed, and grizzly bears were put on that act, so couldn't hunt them. And they've recovered really well. There's about seven or 800 grizzly bears in the Yellowstone region now, and, and some of these now down into the... Grand Teton area. And so Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, wants to um, take them off of the endangered species list and allow hunting again. Um, so there's kind of a, a rabid debate going on here as to whether that should 
be allowed. And uh, they did pass a law and it was legal for a very short time, but the judge put a stay on it. And from my understanding, it's still locked up in the courts right now. I'm a little reluctant to kind of just jump in and take a side on this when I don't fully understand both perspectives. It's really easy to get the conservationist perspective, uh, which is basically just they don't ever want these animals to be hunted. The hunter is a little bit harder sometimes to get their perspective because hunters tend to hunt and uh, conservationists tend to write. So you can find their opinions a lot easier than the hunters. Um, but you know, some of the farmers are concerned that the grizzlies are coming in and killing their livestock and things like that. So as the, as the grizzly population grows and expands, um, you know, certainly it can, they can come into conflict with settlers in the area. So, uh, there are, you know, there are two sides to the story, but she's kind of become the face of, Hey, you can't kill these grizzly bears. Look, here we have somebody who seems to be our friend, who's just very popular. And so, um, that whole drama will continue to unfold. Okay. Finally, how can you, uh, find out about 399 or where can you follow her online? Well, somebody set up an Instagram account just for her, so you can find her at uh, Bear399 on Instagram and also on Facebook. They post pictures from people and they talk like they are her, um, saying where she's going and things like that. So it's pretty fun. So give her a follow there. And then, um, and then again, if you're going there, uh, head up to that north end of the area, ask some rangers, ask around, and see if you can spot her because she's not going to be around much longer. Okay, finally, I would encourage you to watch this amazing documentary that Jim Laybourne did on YouTube called Always Endangered that has fantastic footage of 399. I will put a link to that in the description. Please check it out. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out the other videos that we've done on Grand Teton if you're going there to help you prepare for your trip.